All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to talk about what Volkanovsky should do next. We'll talk about his performance last night and then what he should do next. Because I had an idea this morning that I shared with someone and they shared their idea back to me and their idea is way better. It was a, uh, it, it was actually one of those like, oh my gosh, man, that's the move for sure. I'm not overselling it when I tell you guys what, what was suggested is brilliant. Um, but yeah, and it was a very credible source. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you who it was too. But, uh, but before I do, if you like the content, go ahead and like it. It's very, very helpful, actually. Like it really, I, I found that out. At least getting it going early, if, if people like the videos, it really does help. I would really appreciate it if you guys just throw a like on it very quickly. Even though you haven't even seen the video yet, so you don't know if you're going to like it. But I promise you're going to like this one. This is one of those ones that's just universal. Anybody who hears this idea is going to be like, yes, I'm absolutely on board with that. But, uh, but anyway, I appreciate the support. So, so last night, Volkanovsky demonstrated a level that I, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, I don't think any other featherweight has ever demonstrated ever, right? Because you have these two guys, you got, I mean, like this is, kind of common sense to anyone who really watches the sport, but you got Volkanovsky and you've got Holloway who are heads above anyone else in the division. Not close, like just not close, you know? And they fought twice before to a stalemate. Okay. I made this point before in other videos where it's like, dude, these two guys fought to a stalemate. Like I know Volkanovsky got the, got the decision in the first two, but those are stalemates, especially the second one. Well, not even especially both of them were. They could have gone both of them could have gone either way. But the second one, Max hurt Volkanovski. In the first two rounds, he hurt him. And then Volkanovski kind of outpointed him for three rounds. If you were assessing just damage or knockdowns or whatever, then Holloway wins. But you know, I guess you kind of go go round by round. You're like, I guess he edged that one out. Incredibly close fights. And I don't have any indication that Max Holloway has gotten any less good, right? Like, to me, it doesn't seem like he has, I mean, he looked he looked not as good last night. But from my perspective, it's because Volkanovski is so good that he made it look easy. 50-45? 50-45 against, Alec, against uh, Max Holloway? 50-45? That's honestly more impressive than if he knocked him out. You know, honestly, like, I actually... I, I really think that that is like, cause that's just, it's, it's just like a, a 25 minute demonstration of your skills, you know, and Chael did this interesting video where he was like, how is he doing it? Like he's short. He's not that fast. And you know, he lacks reach. I was, and so I kind of watched a couple of clips of the, of the fight again after Chael said that. And I think a lot of it, is just about how pristine his instincts are in there. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to having trained these things over and over and over. But, like, he knows what a guy's coming with before they do it, you know? Like, I think that he is seeing things coming before they're coming. You know, like, guy, like, and maybe it's unconscious and maybe it's not, but, like, he's reacting to guys before other people would, you know? Like if you, if someone a split second earlier knows something's coming and they get to kind of, you know, they get to react to it first. I mean, it's a, it's a game of millimeters. I don't know. That's what I saw. He's also, he is very, very fast, but man, his instincts are unbelievable. He's so good, dude. And so he 50, 45, I mean, the, the conversation is over. He's the best featherweight in the world. I mean, by a long shot, but anyway, so he says he wants to go to 55, right? He says he wants to go to 55. And so I was like, okay, well, I mean, if they put him in there for a title fight, that'd be awesome. But given the landscape at 55, that would, that would surprise me if they did that. One main reason is because the only time that they ever have guys go for the double champ, only time, is when the person who is moving from one division to the other, okay, is a big draw and the other person is not, okay? You will not find any exceptions to this rule, okay? 
whenever a guy has has gone up or down a weight class to fight against someone for the belt in two weight divisions, every time the person who moves is a huge star and the person who is going against is not. Izzy, Jan Blahovic, right? TJ versus Henry Sudo. Henry Sudo was not Triple C yet. He became Triple C in the buildup for that fight. Before that, he was super boring. Chael used to do used to do videos about how boring he was, which is <laughs> seems like totally bizarre now because he's so not boring. Like he's like, uh, you know, he adopted this persona and he owns it, and it's fu- it's great. It's enter- like the it's the entertainment business, man. But that that one that situation, Daniel Cormier up to fight against Stipe. We all know UFC clearly does not have any faith in Stipe as a draw. And then you got Conor McGregor against Eddie Alvarez, right? Conor was a massive star. Eddie Alvarez is not. Like, he was kind of whatever. They had hoped that Eddie Alvarez was going to be what Michael Chandler is now. And even though he won the title, he just wasn't that type of, like, magnetic draw like Chandler is, you know? And so in every single situation where someone has gone up or down to fight for the belt, like I said, he's a star, they're not. And, uh, oh, you know what? I fucking take that back. I take that back. There's one exception to that rule, and that's Nunez versus Cyborg. Now, in that case, in that case, the reason why there's an exception there is because there was a, there's like no 145-pound girl fighters, right? So they had a real shaky division anyway, and so it was kind of like, okay, well, if Amanda wins, then cool who cares if cyborg wins amanda's still a champ at 135 there's no big risk there but uh the other thing too is dana and cyborg don't get along very well so i think that even if she was kind of a draw he's like fuck her (laughs) you know (laughs) although everyone was picking cyborg to win that fight that was one of the most unbelievable things ever so anyway so volkanovsky going up to fight charles that seems like a tough sell to me you know, because Charles is a draw now. Like, Charles Charles is a draw. And so, putting Volkanovski against Charles seems like a long shot. And you got Connor in the mix. You got Islam in the mix. You have all these guys right there for title shots. And so, it seems like a tough sell to get that fight. So, I did another video about the Chandler and Dustin Poirier thing that happened earlier. Uh, but I, I talked to Chandler afterwards. And I suggested to him, I was like, dude, what if... Because he's lo- like... Chandler wants a fight for the title, period. Like, that's that's what he wants. And uh, and I was like, dude, what if you tried to bait Volkanovsky into a fight, into a 55 fight? He didn't respond to that one, so I don't think he liked the idea. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, because that's not my idea anymore anyway. But uh, but anyway, so that like that's kind of the wavelength I was on, was like, you know, get a big fight at 55 that's not necessarily a title fight, but, you know, big enough name that you could do a five-round fight you know, five round kind of title eliminator or whatever. So I talked to Danny Molina, uh, Anthony Smith's coach, and he's like, you know what he should do? He's like, he should go up and he should call out Gaethje. I was like, oh. he's like, Ima- like just imagine the, uh, re- imagine the fucking respect that that guy, that Volkanovski would get if he went to 55 and in America called out Gaethje, dude. He's a, he's a, he's a kickboxer. Volkanovski's a kickboxer. So any like any weaknesses that you might see, or, you know, maybe seen when Dustin against Khabib and Charles as like grapplers, that doesn't apply for Volkanovski. He's not going to fucking grapple Gaethje. He's going to kickbox against him. And you want to know what is an absolute certainty if you fight Justin Gaethje, you're getting fucking hurt, dude. You're getting fucking hurt. Every single one, every single time. You might beat him, you're getting hurt in the process, Period. No one comes out like uh, another thing Danny was saying is like, he's like, dude, I mean, yeah, it, he was talking about the Izzy fight. He's like, Izzy fought a, he fought a safe fight, right? It's kind of boring, but at the same time, Izzy could fight next week. Like he took no damage. Like he, he could fight next week. No one has ever fought Gaethje and had them say, and had like, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you know, like he won, but he could fight next week. Like, the guys that beat Gaethje were not fighting next week. When Poirier beat Gaethje, he probably couldn't walk for a month, dude. It's one of the best fights of all time. When Khabib beat Gaethje, he took some merciless fucking leg kicks too. Now, he's a stone Russian poker face gangster. And so he looked, you know, he played it off. But that, mo- dude, 
There's no one who's fighting in a week after that. Like, you, you're getting hurt against Gaethje. Plain and simple. Charles Oliveira beat him. Hurt. So if Volkanovski called out Gaethje, went up there and fought him, the fucking balls on that, dude. People would just be like, dude, I don't care what anybody says. That guy is a fucking boss. If he was able to go up and beat Gaethje, first of all, he would get a title shot. But also, just, I mean, imagine, imagine what that would do for his brand. Like, that's what Danny said. And I was like, that's fucking brilliant. You're exactly right. And it's also risk-free because if he loses, he just goes back down to 45. He's the champion there, the dominant champion, you know? So anyway, that was his idea. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, that's what I got.